Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second episode of On Air. I am Fisha Sanders, and with me on chat, and whose lovely voice you just heard, is Victor Sanchez. Um, you know, during this time, we want to encourage the support of local businesses and restaurants. And if you would like to pick up a comforting treat and enjoy while listening, to our programs, Panic and Coffee and Tea in Lucadia is offering most of their menu items and will bring it, your order to your car. Victor will share the contacts and in, website in the chat. So please call in your orders and support the local business. This episode, we will be uh, launching, sorry, <laughs> launching Conan Lesnick's residency, which is officially starting tomorrow. Today, we will take a first look at the exhibition and learn more about the artists. Please, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A and I will answer them at the end. But keep in mind, we will have a lot more episodes that will include some amazing talks and studio visits with the artists. And don't forget our studio series on May 1st. Before I begin, I wanna give a huge shout out to Bryce Morrison who helped me install the show. And as you will see, there is a lot of work to install. And also a big thank you to Justin McHugh for filming this video and making this all happen, you know, for you to see at home. Our team really has been amazing through this whole time and them rising to the occasion to make everything happen. It's been really, really, really incredible to be part of. If you would like to spend more time with the individual photographs, I recommend getting Khan and Selesnik's book, 100 Views of the Drowning World, published by Kendala Books, which, is, which includes their photographs from Troop Fledermaus, Carnival at the End of the World, which is what we have in the gallery and is accompanied by stories. These are all bound up in an ingenious design that allows you to move around the stories to create new narratives. Additionally, we have a special limited edition print available, The Green Men of Ohm's Pond. Please visit the Lux store on our website or follow the link that Victor will be sharing with you if you're interested in purchasing the book or a limited edition print. You can also take a look, closer look at the photographs on Khan and Selesnik's website. Nicholas Kahn was born in 1964 in New York and Richard Selesnik in 1964 in London. They met in the 80s at Washington University in St. Louis and have been working together ever since. They are now both based out of New York State. Their CV is astounding and way too numerous for me to say all here uh, in this talk, but just to give you an idea of some of the places that they have shown. Robichon Gallery in Denver, Colorado, who we will also be doing some collaborations with for on air, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, Hammer Gallery in Chicago, Candela Gallery in Richmond, Virginia, Schoolhouse Gallery in Provincetown, Massachusetts, Boise Art Museum in Idaho, Boston Museum of Fine Arts, El Paso Museum of Art, Museum of Contemporary Art, Jacksonville, Nodelicht Photo Festival in the Netherlands, and I'm gonna apologize for this butchering, Centre d'Art de Photographie de Lecture in France, <laughs> Queensland Centre, uh, Queensland Centre for Photography in Brisbane, Australia, Glenbow Museum in Calgary, Canada, Brooklyn Museum of Art, and Cape Cod Museum of Art. They're also in a lot of major collections, just a few of them our Boston Museum of Fine Arts, Brooklyn Museum of Art, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, Museum of Contemporary, Contemporary Photography in Chicago, and the Smithsonian Institute in Washington. As you can see, their CV is astounding and we're so excited that we get to add Lux Art Institute to that and to have them here with us, well, virtually <laughs> with us for the next month. On exhibit at Lux, we have Troop Fledermaus. Troop Fledermaus, Carnival at the End of the World. Fledermaus means bat in German. That's B-A-T, just to clarify because of my accent. <laughs> the show includes a series of photographs in which a carnival troupe traverses the landscape. 
doing performances and acting as healers of the past and guides for the future. There's a duality reflected throughout their entire body of work where images are constructed to emphasize a history or future of civilization and the impact it has on nature. Time is enigmatic. It's often unclear whether these people, relics and landscapes are from the past, present or future. At Lux, we are presenting a portion of their expansive work that includes their constructed images, posters, banners, flyers, and anthropomorphic sculptures that act as hybridizations between animals and humans. It is the concept of the absurd that really comes into view here. The absurd being the inability to reconcile the coexistence of existentialism, the search for meaning in life, and, the, and nihilism, the belief that life has no meaning. It's this dichotomy that we see as we look at the work that could be set in any time, maybe even in no time, or maybe all times at once. What we see is an elaborate history, story, and anthropology of a group that, met, that maybe never was, or maybe even always has been. It is this ambiguity that drives the rest of their work. It's playful, satirical, and morbid. An Abram carnival troupe that traverses desolate territories in which they perform without an audience, building a detailed folklore of a group forever looking for meaning and meaninglessness, or perhaps instead for fr fr ooh, frivolity in all the significance. It is an ever moving troupe in a continuously changing landscape. The changing landscapes exist not only because of the physical movement of the troupe, but also as a, as a comment on ecological change. change. Change from both the perspective of the destruction of the environment due to climate change, as well as nature's reclaiming and recovery after civilization has disappeared. The landscape becomes its own character in the carnival at the end of the world. It tells its own story of fragility, perseverance, desolation, and revitalization. Khan and Selesnik use everyday materials and found objects to create elaborate costumes and props. Additionally, they create an amazing array of paintings, pastels, drawings, and sculpture that play a role in their photography. Influenced by pictorialism, they photograph themselves wearing these costumes and manipulate the photograph to tell a story, rather than using photography as a direct visual translation. Additionally, these objects and photographs are activated in the museology of their work, where when displayed, these objects function as artifacts in an exhibition about Troupe Fleermaps, a carnival troupe from another time. The show is reminiscent of a natural history museum exhibition. We see how the troupe lived, the materials they had, the clothes they wore, we are getting a glimpse into the lives of this troupe through the documentation of materials they left behind. We get a look at how this mysterious group repurposed objects that we can identify and recognize. However, they have become foreign to us through new symbology. The natural history display itself becomes a masterful approach to the institutional critique of exhibition making. It's a window into the spectacle the idea that mass consumption deteriorates the value of life and culture. We are visually consuming these goods as spectators, which creates an amazing full, full circle critique as the consumer society, as this consumer society caused climate change in the first place. At the same time, the exhibition also celebrates through Fledermas, the lives that they lived and the landscapes they traversed while advocating for nature itself, again bringing in the duality of their work. There's so much to unwrap in Khan and Selesnik's work, and we will have several programs coming up in the next couple of weeks that will dive into some of these topics. So please join us for those programs um, to hear more from the artists and other experts. Before I move on to talk about some of the things that they'll be doing while they're in residence with us, please leave your, Q or your questions in the Q&A section so that I can answer those at the end of the talk. 
During their residency, Khan and Selesnik are thinking about rewilding, specifically looking at the return of marginal spaces and abandoned land to a wild state. They are inspired by witnessing this process happening in Cape Cod and the Hudson Valley, which are the landscapes that they primarily use for their work. Over the years working in these landscapes, the artists have observed firsthand the return and reinvigoration of forests and wetlands, which in turn has led to the recolonization of these areas by plants and animals. The project will be presented in a number of sub-projects or chapters that will include a cycle of songs based on the beast folk genre, which I'm personally very interested to know more about, a group of panoramic photographs, paintings, text, and painted flags and banners of various types. While in residence with Lux, Khan and Slesnik will start this project by creating a series of flags with images and in of insects on them. These will be done in the manner of Joris Hufnagel, a painter and miniaturist of the Flemish Renaissance, who was one of the first artists to use natural history illustration as a method of scientific inquiry. Victor will share the name with you in the chat so that you can take a look at um, the work that he's done. On the backs of the flags, there will be a rewilding slogan, prayer or seagull, that will be visible when light shines through the material. Once again, uh, once en <laughs> enough flags have been completed, the artists plan to take these flags into the landscape and stage a series of parades to both celebrate the insect and also mourn its decline in both quantity and diversity, which, if continues, has serious environmental implications. The artists view this project as the third installment for the Absurdist Troop Fledermaus series, which um, we are showing the first installment of here at Lux. I would like to open it up to your questions now. Um, I don't see any questions yet, but I can give you a little bit more time. Oh, I see a question here. Will the finished residency work be sent to Lux? That is a, a really good question, actually. We have not talked about that, um, but we have talked about creating a special performance that will be only open to a small group. Um, let me play this video again. I keep talking, uh, to a small group to witness this live performance with these flags. Um, as far as I know, I don't think these residency pieces will be sent to Lux at this time, but maybe in the future we'll have another opportunity to work with Khan and Selesnik. Um, let's see. Uh, while I'm waiting for other questions, I can tell you a little bit more about the install, which has been incredible. Um, Bryce and I, it took us almost three days to install all of these photographs. We have about 80 photographs in the gallery, um, another about maybe 60 to 70 posters. The hanging bat creature was incredible. It's hung with a 150 year old rope that was incredibly dusty and definitely left its residue on me for a couple of days. But, you know, it's been such an honor to work with Bryce and to get to install the show. And it's been really great and exciting to uncover each piece the way that hopefully everybody will get an opportunity either through the book or through a different way to explore their body of work. Well, we're getting a couple more. Um, questions coming in from uh, people. I'm wondering why the Truppfledermaus is German. So Truppfledermaus comes from a opera, uh, Die Fledermaus. Uh, it's inspired by that, which is a German opera. Um, I don't know that much about the opera, but I definitely want to learn a little bit more. Um, then we have another question. What will they be, they be making in the residency? Um, so they will be working on those flags, uh, the pastel drawings of the insects inspired by Joris Hufnagel. And they'll be doing a performance with that. 
I have have uh, these works been shown in other places? Where else can we see their work? So we, they have shown Troop Fledermaus kind of at the end of the world at several locations. Um, some of them I've mentioned earlier. Uh, they do have another show opening up at Robichon Gallery in Denver, which we'll be collaborating with. It's a different body of work, but it will be a really great way to see uh, a more extensive view of what the work that they do is and we'll uh, be talking with the curator there as well. Um, then we have when did they produce these works? So they started this body of work in 2012 uh, and they've been working on it continuously while also developing other projects but it's kind of a continuous body of work that now they're starting the third installment of um, here at Lux. Um, so someone asked, doesn't it mean bet? Uh, it does mean bet. I have a little bit of an accent, which is why I spell it out B-A-T. <laughs> so Fledermaus means bet in German. All right. Oh, I have more questions coming. Ah. <laughs> um, when can we expect the next episode of On Air? Uh, that's a great question. Our next episode on air will be next week, Thursday. We are still defining that program, but we will have a program then. And then on Friday, we will have a tarot um, a talk and live reading by Leticia Barbier, um, who will be looking at Canon Selesnik's tarot deck and doing a comparison, which is really exciting. And come ask your questions in the Q&A during that live stream. And get a live reading from Leticia. And then we also have a our first connection with the artists on Saturday. So not this Saturday, but next week, Saturday, where they will be giving us their first studio visit tour and an update on the residency project. Oh, I got a question. What is my favorite piece in the uh, exhibition? I am going to say, I mean, it's really hard to pick because all of it is amazing, but I, ha I have to admit, I made a little bit of a, in some ways, creepy, morbid, disturbing connection with the sculpture with the black feathers and the human eyes and the heads. There was something very um, intense about putting that head on his, uh, on the top, the head on top of his head that really, um, impacted me in a strange um, and kind of morbid way <laughs> like I was dressing up death or something it was it was strange and another question do they keep and display most of their props um, that is a good question so the different uh, costumes that they create are on this have been on display at different locations and then the posters and banners that they have created for the tube flatel mouse are often on display as well so I would say yes um, how will we see the result final result of what they're working on um, keep an eye on, on air and see kind of as it progresses, uh, how to work uh, moves from one to another. And then also uh, the opportunity to see their performance with these pieces that they're creating. Those would be some of the ways to see the works finalized. And then I have <laughs> the next question, will they be coming to Lux? Sadly, during this time, they will not be coming to Lux, but that doesn't mean that hopefully in the future, when things um, settle down, we could have an opportunity to maybe revisit that, uh, have them come say hi, and you know, the sky's the limit. Lux uh, has some amazing programs. And we're always looking to add more and to celebrate past artists and residents. So um, at this moment, no, but who knows what the future brings. And then I'll take this last question. Will there be a chance for members and guests to meet the artists digitally during their residency? Uh, good question. Yes, we will have opportunities for uh, a meet and greet with the artists. Um, we are hosting um, small meet and greets. Please reach out to Stephanie Dow, um, S-D-A-O 
at luxartinstitute.com. Maybe, Victor, you can send that in the chat as well. Um, thank you so much. Well, uh, this was, has been great. Thank you so much all for tuning in. We won't have an episode tomorrow, but we'll be back next week, Thursday, with new honor episodes. And until then, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and looking forward to seeing you soon.